Thank you so much, Pastor May, for inviting me up here to share my story about China and what God did. Um, first, let me say it is an honor to be up here to represent my Mixon family. Um, I am the offspring and the son to Debbie and Paul Mixon. My name is Christian James Mixon, and that is my name, so I want to represent it well. First off, um, I am a student at Youngstown State University, and I first want to just give acknowledgments and gratitude to God, first off, Providence, and Pastor Maiden for supporting me financially uh, to my trip to China. So I think to begin, I briefly, again, I want to briefly talk about my obedience to saying yes to Jesus and going on this mission trip and the fruit that came out of me going. So a lot of the things that I learned in China and being a black person and, and involving myself in a different culture is very scary, it's very intimidating. There are a lot of barriers that I had to overcome. But in my many journeys and in the times that I spent there, I was building relationships with a lot of the Asian students who were there. Some identified as Han, others identified as Tibetan, but I was building relationships with them to at some point share the love of Christ with them. And actually, I didn't share this at last service, but recently this past year, there was a, an, an Asian student who actually gave his life to Jesus this past year. And he's a follower of Christ and he's been mentored. So just to talk a little bit about the culture, um, when I got over there, the people love Americans. They love you as soon as you get off the plane. They're so welcoming, they're so inviting, and they just have a heart of service. Their passion is, is not bound to anything, and they don't even know you, and they're loving you by offering to pay for your meals to um, either pour your, pour your drink for you. They're always putting you before themselves in the heart of service. Another part of it is they have a real appreciation in the beauty and their culture and in their families and in their home lives. In America, we have more of an individualistic type of living and over there they have a collectivistic type of living. So many times they value family, they value tradition and things like that. Another part I want to share with this is, I can't lie that this trip was hard. It was definitely hard being black. It was hard because I was homesick. I missed American food. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the biggest thing about that was my privilege of being an American cit citizen was taken away from me. As I reflected this, I imagined how Jesus felt leaving his home and living amongst us who were sinful and disobedient at times. But because of his and God's great love for us, he sacrificed his privilege and displaced himself in, in, I'm sure, an uncomfortable situation, only to be obedient to the Father's will and love for us, his creation. So I think I realized two things. One is that the, the call to following Jesus is demanding, it's radical, and it's uncomfortable. The next part is, if you truly want to be a great leader, you must first be a servant, as it says in Mark chapter 10, verse 43. With these two scriptures, I just want to leave you guys with, with this, to how you can be a part of God's mission and God's vision of how he sees his people, how he sees the nation, how he sees the world. So it says in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them these new disciplines to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure I am with you always until the end of the age. And also, to in Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 through 39, it says, If you love your father or your mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being my disciple. If you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. So I think just to end this, I think sometimes the perception is we have to go overseas to be involved in mission work. That's not the case at all. You can be a missionary right here in America, in your homes, when you go to the store, when you go to the ghetto, wherever you go, you can be a missionary and a light to anyone that you touch. People my age need to see 
the church and others going to them and living out what it means to have the light and to have salvation. I think another part to this, too, is that we have a wonderful gift that God has given us. He's given us all the free gift of salvation and knowing him. We have a lot of spiritual gifts, but we have one main gift that we can share with the whole world, and that's eternal life with Jesus and with God and fellowship with him. So again, I just wanted to invite the church and challenge a lot of us to do this mission work and to be a part of God's plans. But as God's servants, um, just being called to that radical mindset and what it means to be transformed through the gospel and going out and reaching others who are in our community. Thank you. It's a blessing to see young people who's on fire for the Lord and committed to the Lord. In fact, just this morning, we sent out, I think, two bands of young people to do mission work down in Virginia and helping people. And that's what it's all about. And so when I see people like Christian and others who say, listen, I'm going to dedicate my life for the Lord because we, we see all the negative things about what young people are doing or not doing and but when we see the positive things that's what we need to to highlight and pinpoint and and, and support young men like Christian in his mission endeavor so please please support him pray for him uh, again there's a conference coming up he really need your support and say listen Christian I want to sow seeds into you I want to invest in you and uh, to make it to that leadership conference. Because listen, uh, we, we need future leaders. Yeah. And we need to start getting involved in these young people's lives and investing in them uh, who are real and want to serve God. And, uh, and we thank God for, for him.